So here we are, another question and answer class. Um, so now is your chance, uh, if you've signed up, especially for the class, the online classes, to uh, ask the questions. Uh, we're here waiting for those questions. Uh, meanwhile, I think I'll go over a couple of the questions that we had. Um, hopefully we're getting them all. Sometimes we miss a few here and there. Forgive us if we do. Just ask again, um, if you don't mind. But um, this is from Michael. Um, he was viewing the tub chair class, and thank you, Michael, for signing up. And uh, he, he had a question about, on that class, we did um, some angle cuts on the inside back, and he was wondering, we used the patterns, because I love the way it fit on that back. So he was wondering uh, about, um, do you have a video on the actual uh, making your own angle cuts on that? So what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to demonstrate on this chair, I think, for him just for Michael and for anybody else that's interested. So I'm just going to show you a little bit about how to do that if, if you don't have the patterns, okay? So uh, this is the chair that I have up. It's not a tub chair, but let's pretend that it has a, a curved back. And the re I'll show you how I'll pretend to do that. Take a piece of chalk. We'll take this magic marker. So on the tub chair it has two seams and they're angled seams and what we did was we took it apart. We had inside back of two um, inside back of two inside arms. So it had a break right here. So let's let's we can't see that. Let's get another magic marker. Yeah, that's good. So we had two angle seams like so, okay? So we used the, we took the old old one off and we used it as a pad because we liked the way. If you don't have a pad in Michael, what you need to do is make sure that you cut your fabric oversized like you saw us do on, on the tub chair, three inches, right? And what you want to do is make sure it's centered by pin tacking up at the top or pinning, pinning the fabric first, right? Up at the top of the bottom. Let's just represent that with this fabric. I can't cut this because this is the fabric we're using on our class today. So let's say you got to tack up so, right, it's pinned. Pin it, pin it well, especially if you have a center point like a, a vine like that. And then what you want to do is make little cuts this way to relieve the fabric a little bit to get you close to this line, right? So if you get close to the line, then you could take a piece of chalk and chalk where the line is, right? Then you could take it off the piece, put it on your table, and cut it a half of an inch to the left, or if you're on, the, on this side, half of an inch to the right. And then, because you've centered it so well, you fold it, after you cut it a half of an inch from your chalk line, you can fold it in half, face to face, and cut the other side, and you get a perfect, you get two perfect angled cuts. I hope that explains it. And on your arm, your inside arm comes this way, you do the same thing. You, you, you prep it up there first, chalk it, and then you take that inside arm, the right inside arm, and put it face to face with the left inside arm, and then you've got your whole back, that need, and then you sew it. So I hope, Michael, um, I hope that demonstrated that. But keep watching. I hope you're enjoying the tub chair class, and we love to get uh, comments on people who are taking the online classes. Um, uh, that's great, that's very helpful for other people. The whole idea is where, you know, we're trying to uh, promote education too, and that's what the YouTube videos are for, the free YouTube videos. Um, and don't forget to subscribe. I think we're at uh, over 7,000 at this point. Uh, so uh, don't be afraid to subscribe. We found out, like I said before, that 10 times people, 10 more times more people are watching the YouTube videos and not subscribing. And we have a four and a half minute retention rate on our videos, so we know that people are enjoying the videos, but they're not subscribing. We ask you to subscribe. And of course, if you enjoy the YouTube videos, you will really love the online classes. And that's from to broadwayupholsteryschool.com. And uh, even if you just want to go on there to see what we're doing, to see um, what the website looks like, which I think is a fine website, um, go on and take a look at it. Um, it but, you know, YouTube, keep enjoying the YouTube videos. Uh, we enjoy doing them, and uh, we'll offer more of them. I just noticed 
uh, if Jimmy wants to, uh, getting off subject a little bit, but we have a little cat damage here. The cats are at it again. Yeah, yeah. This is a, we're, we're going to be upholstering this chin. If I have time today, I wanted to show people um, how to strip furniture with just using the side cutters. I'm just going to use one tool. Um, we have a question. Yes, we have a question. Yes, this one is from Omnipotent Mama. I forgot her. her oh, she's a, she's a frequent person. Yeah. One of the frequent. Yeah. Yes, yeah, she says, I have been watching the tub chair videos. I have a similar chair with a curve, just it's a slipper chair. Do I upholster the back or the bottom seat first? Does it matter? Always the seat first. Um, that's a good question. But what you're not telling me is if you have seams on, the, on that little chair. Sometimes, sometimes they don't have seams. Um, you, you could, depending on the fabric that you use on those smaller chairs, you can get away with not seaming it but it has to be a, a particular fabric, a particular stretch. And um, so if you want to just follow up with that, and, and the question I have would be, is it already seamed just like the tub chair? And it's always a good idea to do the seat first. I'll tell you why, because the seat has to be tacked down first. So if you do the back, you have to pin tack it. You can do it, the back first, but you have to pin tack the back up on the top rail to get entry for the seat to come down. Do you know what I mean? So you're going against the order of things, although sometimes we, we do that. I mean, uh, but it's just an extra step that you, you, you have to put the pin the inside back up instead of tacking it down, right? So um, the next question, uh, do we have any more questions uh, live? Um, there's another comment, she says, there are front seams on the seat. There are what? Front seams. I guess I didn't hear that. Front seams. Front seams on the seat. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Still has to be done first. And uh, is there a loose cushion? Uh, I don't know. Um, but always the seat should go on first. So the order of things when we're stripping furniture, um, it's, this is the order, okay? It's the cambric, the last thing the upholsterer puts on, um, the, hold on a second, the outside arms, the outside back, the inside arms, the inside back, and the seat. So I, I took you in reverse. <laughs> it's hard to think that way sometimes, but. So the order of things for this chair, the order of how we're going to upholster it is the seat and the deck, the inside arms, the inside back, the outside arms, the outside back, the, the cambric, and, and then some, the panels on this. So it's much easier doing it in order. Um, I hope that answers your question. But That's a good thing to know, Kevin. Yeah. We've had a busy day here. Jimmy is a cameraman tonight, believe it or not. He, we've, we've promoted him to cameraman. I hope he does a good job. It's still not a union paying job, by the way. <laughs> she says that it is an armless chair and there's no loose cushion. So it's an upholstered seat. Ah. So an uh, upholstered seat with no, no upholstery, kind of like yours, Jimmy. Oh, God. Your chair. Your chair. You want to pan down? Oh, yes. I'll pan down. This the, is for Jimmy's the audience chair. To see. We're going to tie that in with the question, but we, we give you a sneak preview on Jimmy's chair. This is his online chair. This is the next chair we're going to be showing. And I have to tell you, folks, Jimmy, Jimmy can probably back me up on this. There is a lot of work on this little chair. <laughs> He's on. I'm his sorry. Chair. That's all I can say. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> on his ninth class on this one. This is a. This is a. This is a toughie. Um, sometimes those easy-looking chairs are the hard ones. Um, so, so you got his chair is a, he has a loose cushion, but let's pretend he doesn't, okay? And I'm pretty sure that this is the chair that we're discussing, um, is that it has an inside back and outside back and just a seat, and it's a slipper chair which has no arms, no arms. Jimmy has wooden arms, but her chair is a slipper chair. Actually, those slipper chairs were used in in the Victorian days, Jimmy. Okay. Um, they were also called vanity chairs. And they were also used, uh, they were designed so that a woman's hoop skirt would, would, would just go around the chair and not get stuck on an arm. So when she oh. sat, when a woman with the hoop skirt sat down, 
she could just cover the whole chair and sit down. You wouldn't have to kind of push yourself into the that, push that, her back that, into that's the right. chair. That's okay, right. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. So uh, definitely, you still need to do the the seat first on that. So so let's get to some of our questions here, Jimmy. Um, let's see. Adjusting a down pillow. Somebody commenting on about adjusting a down pillow and um, it was Nicole and this was on YouTube she was she, she thought she was at a self-defense video uh, because on that video I'm showing people how to get a down cushion back to its original shape and um, I guess it did look like she's I think she's tongue-in-cheek when she said am I in a, is this a self-defense video or is this a repulse <laughs> But that was that was an interesting uh, video um, showing how to take a down cushion and just you know fluff it up. It takes some aggression, I guess. That's what she was commenting on, maybe. Um, so then we have another question about a uh, Janine. Um, she uh, she just made a comment about a video that we did. It was a floral placement video of, of how to how to cut fabric and place fabric on a chair, and and the thought process that goes into that. Um, we didn't have to think about, upholsterers didn't have to think about this before the 90s, Jimmy, right? Mm -hmm. Because that, the 90s is when uh, designers started taking drapery off the windows and putting it on the furniture. And the difficulty with that is that prints uh, can go up to a 36 inch repeat or a 42 inch repeat. So that's kind of hard when you're cutting it down to a small a piece of furniture. So we were talking about that, and Janine, I think, made a comment, um, you know, that she didn't realize how much thought went into went into something like that. So uh, thank you for that comment, Janine. Um, somebody made a comment about a sofa um, on YouTube that we. It's very rare that we took a sofa and we went from A to Z on this sofa. And I think I believe this was a diamond tufted sofa, but not a traditional diamond tufting. It was what we call um, a casual tuft. It still was pleated, it still was buttoned, but it was a casual tuft. It wasn't done, it wasn't a hard tufting, which is a difference. So we're going to be getting something in here, um, hopefully we'll show it, um, which is a traditional tufted um, Victorian piece, which has, a, it's all horsehair. So in order to do a real uniform and tight diamond tufting, you need it, you need horsehair. There's no other way to do it. Foam just doesn't cut it, it's too soft. So foam, foam is, is, um, is just too soft. Oftentimes they try to use tufting uh, with foam and it doesn't work. The buttons loosen up, the tufting, the, tuft, the tufts, uh, the pleats loosen up and it doesn't look that great. Yeah. So Jane made a comment about the 1800 Martha Washington uh, YouTube channel that we did, uh, I mean uh, video, and um, she said, wouldn't it be nice to have a, uh, a video about cuts, about basic cuts, which we did, I think based on that comment. So it's up, uh, it's up now, you can go on to YouTube to the basic fabric cuts. And speaking of which, uh, Jimmy, our cameraman operator, who's doing a fine job. Slash apprentice, slash uh, uh, He had a very difficult task today, speaking of cuts. You, I think Jimmy had one of the hardest um, cuts, uh, probably other than that Martha Washington chair cutting that we saw. Um, so I want him to just to pan down. Can you pan down a little bit here, Jimmy? I like to applaud my work. So the first thing is, <laughs> Jimmy likes challenges, I think. Yeah, I, I, that's why I think I'm going to find another occupation. Thank you. <laughs> so he's, he's got a, pretty much a stripe. It's a floral, but it's a stripe, right? It's a floral vine, which is hard to match. Um, the fabric itself, has, has, in order to make these cotton flowers, it has a stringy uh, cotton string running behind it, so that makes it hard to, to cut and to uh, it frays the fabric frays a little bit too. So his challenge on this chair, speaking of cuts, was um, to cut around this very narrow arm. Okay, and what makes it difficult, Jimmy found out today. He did a great job. Is that you have to stretch the fabric before you cut it, and that's that. There lies the problem for most people because. Once you cut, once you torque it tight in order to get a proper cut read, 
Um, it, it takes the fabric in all different directions and you really have to think before you cut because um, this was, there was hardly any room for error on this, was there, Jim? No. Yeah. No, I thought we had a little bit of, a little give, a little flexibility, but there was nothing you showed yeah. me. And now, now, in case Jimmy, Jimmy didn't know it, I, I didn't want to make him nervous, but um, there is something... I'm on medication, by the way. <laughs> there is something that he could have done if he, if he made a little bit of a mistake, and you're talking just a little bit of a mistake, but... He could have taken a piping. I'm going to show you right here, you guys. This is a great tip for the day, right here. Um, you take you take a piping, and watch what I do. I'm going to swing it around like that. I'm going to cut it to the size that it wraps around that arm. I'm going to take the flange or the salvage, and I'm going to cut the salvage down to about an eighth of an inch to the seam. Don't want to cut the seam because that unravels and looks worse. I don't know if Jimmy could pick this up. What, what he could have done is he could have inserted this welt and pulled it really tight. Look at that. So that, that would have covered um, any um, miscut up to about an eighth of an inch though still. But that would have been a good out if he made a mistake. But fortunately, Jimmy didn't make a mistake. And that class telling you that that class was running 10 classes and we we put the we put these classes at six usually for the you know the, the price that we're, we're charging for it a lot of these classes are running over because we're really getting into a lot of detail and I think I think it's great for you guys that I think there's more value in these classes than when we started because they're all, all over running um, and I think in this in, in, this really surprised us, um, surprised everybody, uh, at how much detail there is in this and how much, uh, how, how many little tips there are in each class. Uh, but that will be coming up um, right now. What, what type chair class are we into right now, Patrick? What number? What Monday night? This past Monday, what was it? Do you um, it's either six or seven. Six or seven. Six or seven. So um, that's up now, but this will be following. So we have another question. It's by the same person. Erica. How do you tuft when the back isn't open anymore? I want to place a single button in the front of the chair mentioned above. I have seen a tool you can use for a repair, to repair a button. Oh yeah, Judy, that's a good question. So Erica. Erica, Erica I'm sorry. Erica, that's called a um, German needle. And I'll, I'll show you, I have one here. It's funny you should mention this. The clasp used the German needle fell the other day all over the floor. So I probably have, they have probably have them all over the place here. But so a German needle, Kevin. That's a German needle. Oh, okay. Bring it up the, to the, uh, the well, Let me show you the clasp. Actually, that's a great uh, question. So she's asking, how do, you, how do you get a button back in that, and you don't want to open up the outside back? Um, so this is, the, this is the tool. You know, I might as well just demonstrate the whole thing. Let's just get some thread. You can use this lighter weight thread if you want, but I usually use a, a tufting twine too. It's just a little strong, but this is, this, this is not going to break too. This is okay. So what we're going to do is cut that about a yard. We're going to thread the clasp first. That gets threaded, the clasp. And the clasp is put inside the needle with the threads coming out. If you can see that. And you have to hold it now. You have to hold it tight, the thread, and make sure this clasp is in the, in the mechanism right, right there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to inject this into the chair and we're going to push this lever down and that's going to push a hammer to the clasp and release the clasp in the chair so that we hopefully we hook in there and we'll be able to have a, a slip. It should slip and then we can put a slip knot on. I'll show you that in a minute. So let's, let's try it. By the way guys, this chair is being upholstered so <laughs> don't worry about anything. <laughs> So I'm going to try to push this through, and then I'm going to push push this lever in. The hammer goes, and we the clasp is inside the chair. Now, hopefully, when I pull this, 
the clasp has caught onto something in the back, a spring, some jute webbing or, or burlap or anything tight. I'm going to give it a pull. You kind of hope that you've caught something and guess what I did. That's nice and tight. Give it a good pull, okay, and make sure that it's, it's holding. And then what you do is you test to make sure that you've got it loose. Look at that. So it's moving through the clasp to the threads. That's what you need, right? Now, if you had your button, you just get a button. Never a button when you need one. I'll be right back. I think I know where the buttons are. Okay, so I have a button. It's not a, it's not a made button, it's just the loop portion of the button, which is all I need for this. It's actually probably easier to show you with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread one side of the button, one side of the thread I made, right? Yeah, just one, not both of them. And then I'm going to do my um, slip knot, and we've made at least, I think, two of these videos on YouTube, and um, you should look at that and slow it down and learn this knot. If anybody's going to be doing this, even as a hobby, you need to know that knot. Okay, what you want is on your right, if you're a right-handed person, you want that extended um, probably about six inches more than the left, than the left one, right? I'm going to try to get an angle for you, a better angle. And I'm trying to, see, obviously, if you're doing this at home, you're standing in front of the chair. I'm trying to show you off to the side, see if we can get both views here. What you want to do is, I'm going to try to slow this down as much as possible, go like this, and throw this over here, like, this, like so, just thread. And like I said, I have a really good video on, on this, on YouTube. Just put, go to Broadway Upholstery School on YouTube and put in Slipknot. Okay, so now if the Slipknot is key to getting this button tight, right? Was it Janine that asked that question about the button? Is it Janine or Erica? Erica. We forgot, but anyhow. So... Oh, what happened, Kevin? So the clasp broke. So the clasp uh, uh, fell off. So you just have to redo it. Okay, everything worked out great except the clasp came through. So you just have to keep trying that, folks. Uh, sometimes it takes two or three times uh, before you get it right, but that's it. Now the other alternative is to remove the outside back and, and then just put it in a, in a regular fashion from the outside. And we also have a video, Patrick, on YouTube showing how to do that, how to repair a button by removing some of the outside back. Uh, we do it very cleverly. We don't undo the whole back. We just undo it where the button, where the problem is, or the button, and, and then we, we, we repair it from there. So check that out too. That's a good question. Is there, are there any more questions live right now? No? No. Okay. So I wanted to ask Jimmy a couple of questions while I have oh, them here. God, not the questions. Um, Actually, I've got a couple of more questions to ask. <laughs> Where is it? We had a couple of comments. <laughs> Let's see. Where's your coffee? <laughs> One more comment I wanted to get to is from Maggie. She says, Where can I buy a clinch it? Okay. A clinch is an expensive tool. But I think if Maggie's asking about a clincher, she should be asking about the other supplies that she should be getting and on the website. And, and I only, I'm only promoting this because I know that it's got the, that the kit that we're selling on the website has the best supplies and it opens up a dialogue. I give you the wholesaler's name if you buy the kit and the book and it's very inexpensive. But the reason that, the reason that it's so good for you guys who are just starting out is that you can go directly to my supplier and build a relationship with him um, and then get the clinch it after the supplies. That's what I would recommend that you do. Uh, because if you're asking about a clinch it, you must be needing you know, quality upholstery supplies too. 
and, and the best way to do it is through that kit that I offer. So that's Broadway Upholstery School. So are there any more questions right now, Patrick? No. No? No. Okay. No. I'm going to start stripping this chair uh, for you guys. I want to show you um, how I do it. Um, somebody was commenting about um, trying to find easier ways of stripping furniture. And, um, I'm going to show you that I'm only going to use two tools. Uh, I'm going to try to get as much of this stripped as possible before we have to go. And if you guys want to ask questions as you go along, that's fine. Um, so plenty of time, 30 more minutes. The only two tools that you need to get you stripping is probably this whole chair to where it's upholstery ready is a chisel and your side cutters. Or if you have a pair of pliers, that's fine too. So I'm going to start in the back. Sometimes, let me just get my German needle out of there. Oh, I actually wanted to bring Jimmy in for a minute to ask him a couple is of it questions. Is yeah, yeah. Come on in, Jimmy. Oh, okay, all right. I'll come in again. All right, what's up? Because Jimmy is on his ninth class with this little little chair that doesn't mean much, or it doesn't look like much, but it is. It didn't look like much in the beginning, but then it seemed like we kind of discussed the history and how it was made, and mm -hmm. uh, again, the uh, framing of it is not what I thought it was going to be, or rather the springs were not what I thought they were going to be. Right. You know, it wasn't... Uh, Traditional springs, it was a unit. Yeah, right. Which is a kind of surprising. Unit. I never expected that at all. Yeah, we, we find so, so many surprises sometimes. But you also did the you did some standing on this and you did some gluing on the frame. Mm -hmm. So that's stuff that you did at home. Yes. Uh, we don't do that here. No. Um, well, but we haven't expanded to that service yet. Right. <laughs> I, find I need a shed. <laughs> I need a shed and a couple of power, a couple of power plugs there. And you'll be all set. Yeah. But Jimmy, um, on this chair, um, it needed a fitted seat uh, underneath the cushion. And that fitted seat is very important to the overall look and comfort of the chair, which requires a lot of work. There's mited sewn corners, there's a deck that's all sewn on three sides, and there was some building of the, f of the seat around the deck that um, is important to keep it over uh, so that the cushion kind of nestles in there nicely. And then the inside back, uh, and all then, brand new. All brand new. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you turn it around to show people what we did on that. So, um, originally it wasn't such a great thing that they had in there, was it, Jimmy? I think it was a temporary fix and they obviously, it just, people forgot about it. Yeah. You know, a, yeah. a quick fix for the time. And oh yeah, it's good. There you go. You're yeah. all set. So what you did was you, you did webbing and burlap and, and uh, new stuffing and everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I hope that when the people see it from the beginning to the to where it is right now, um, you know, you kind of get a good idea of what we had to go through, especially with the bar, the decking alone. Yeah. Good job. So we have a question. Let's let's. Uh, this is from Newman Grove Extra. They're asking if you have a testing video. Yeah, we do. I just mentioned that we have, but I, I do want to let you know that we have a tuft, tufting video that is a soft, casual tuft, and we were just talking about that, that um, there's a difference between the casual tufts that you see in, in a lot of manufactured furniture today, even high-end manufacturing. The, the tufting is wider apart, save time okay. and money. And it's soft. It's soft, and that and the problem with soft, like usually when I say soft, mm -hmm. it's going over foam. It's uh, going over foam, and foam is soft. So Traditionally, diamond tufting mm -hmm. was about three or four inches apart. Jimmy, let me just show well, you. Well, let's just let's just show people. Well, you'd have what one, two, you know, separated. It wouldn't be. Yeah. But what three or four inches apart? So. This is what I wanted to work with. Yeah. So diamond tufting, there's a button there. Actually, you see the diamonds that are in your fabric pattern here. Okay. But they're bigger than that. And then a diamond, a, a button here, a button here, mm -hmm. and a button here to form a diamond. Mm -hmm. Okay, traditionally, um, you get a nice heavy pleat. This is what makes it hard and time consuming, by the way, that are going from each button. It's a pleat. And all okay. your pleats have to be going down. You know, I, I don't think that we have, we may do it, uh, but I don't think we have a traditional diamond tufting video yet. But you will see 
Um, so, so in order to make these look good, it has to be horsehair or fur material. Horsehair is the only material. That you can do this with? Well, that makes it look really br bright and brilliant, really nicely, and lays your tufts down. It has to be firm, see? Mm -hmm. So the only thing that provides that firmness and, and, um, and also some spring, mm -hmm. um, when I mean spring, it, it, it bounces back, is the, is the horsehair. Um, okay. So, and, and it has to be pretty much, it's about four inches, okay? Now, if you're doing something smaller, like a, a vanity that I think uh, Janine had or Erica, mm -hmm. those, um, maybe you bring in your tufting even closer. So, if you have a smaller piece, like on this piece, I would put it at four inches, right? Mm -hmm. And I would be doing horse hair in the back. Okay. But if, if you're doing a, a smaller piece, let me just see if you get this in here. You like a vanity. You would be a little closer on your on your diamond tufting, right? And of course, there'd be you know you'd have you'd have you know There's projecting three. from there. You'd have one here. You have one here, right? You have one here, and then your pleats going like so. They're all connecting, right? See that? Well, they have they have the tufting. They can also have in rows too, correct? Well, yeah. You you would have them all the way around here. Okay. So people get confused. They think they think. Some people will say, I want my, my sofa tufted. What they really mean is buttons on the surface. Right. Well, okay. it gives it a classy look. Buttons on the surface is like no even, not even an extra charge. It's just, it's so easy to do. Um, but the best way would be, as, as you mentioned quickly, was coming through the back. I mean, if you were going to yeah. tuft this, you would come, the back would be the last thing anyway you oh, do. Oh, yeah. You'd have to pull your buttons through and make your slip knots on the other side. It's right. essential. But you'd have, but you'd, you would definitely have something to hang on to, like the yeah. You need you need it open. Whatever. Yeah, you need it open okay. actually. So the other the chair that we the sofa that we have it's called upholstering a sofa part one, and I think it's like six parts. Or, or yeah, eight. just link that in the comments. Though. Oh, okay, good. So, but remember, what you're going to see there is modern uh, diamond tufting, not not uh, traditional diamond tufting like this would be. Um, so on that sofa, you're going to see big, big diamonds. You know, you're going to start like right here with a button. And you got another button way over here, Jimmy. And another button way over here. And then big pleats. The problem with that is that it's soft. And, you know, when you're, when you're talking to your client, they've already had the sofa, so they know that their pleats, you know, aren't going to fall down completely all the way, or when she's using them, she might lose a little bit of the pleat work. It's, it's called casual, it's a casual treatment. I happen to like the traditional way. But this way, this yes. one only time So Patrick, you might want to write that on the board that we have a sofa coming in that has traditional diamond tufting. So who was the, made the comment asking about, do we have a video on that? Um. That would be Newman Grove Extra. I think Newman's new, and thank you for watching. I think what we'll do is, um, we have one coming in, so we'll do, um, um, we'll do a video. By the way, I had some exciting news for Erica if she's watching, or if she's listening. Sometimes she's listening in our car, Jimmy. Can you believe that? Well, that's quite the uh, follower. I think she <laughs> should be the, the president of your fan club. Well, I don't know. Uh, but we're going to be doing a customized... It's a non-paying job, by the way. I'm just going to tell you that right now. We're going to be doing a customized video for her. Okay. And would you mind panning that sofa that's standing on end up there? Oh, wow. Panning all the way around and take a look at that, Jimmy. Okay. That is a, um, that has an arm that I've been waiting for to come in to Erica. She has that, um, that she's waiting for that um, for us to make a custom video. I'm going to do it on that sofa. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of excited. That's going to be coming up. Uh, I don't know the fabric for that yet, but when I do, you're going to be you're going to be you know getting that video soon, Erica. Okay. Okay. So we're just going to back over here, Jimmy. If you oh, but, the, the, but the sofa was so exciting, Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> if Jimmy can man the camera, I'm going to. Now the fur is going to fly here with me stripping this piece, so I'm going to try to show you in real time how I do it. So first thing I do, I'm going to take these beautiful panels off, which by the way, are wood. they're wood, so we're going to reuse these. We're going to strip this fabric and reuse them. They just put on with brads, right? Those come off first. 
All righty, we're going to put those aside. Then what we're going to do, Jimmy, is going to tear off the back. I'm not even going to turn this over to do the camber, believe it or not yet. Uh, this is how I do it. Okay, I already took the outside back off and it was put on with this ply grip. Okay. So I'm going to move the ply grip. Hopefully this comes off in one. Oh, I am. Um, oh, there we go. Pull it in such a way. But by the way, folks, sometimes things pull easier one way than the other. So if you're having a hard time on one end, go to the other end and see if it's easier. It, it, sometimes it depends on the angle of the staple gun. Sometimes the staples don't sit flush, uh, flush and then um, if they're up a little bit on one side, they'll be, it'll pull out easier. Okay. Um, Joseph Soto asks if a 100 psi air compressor is good for a staple gun. Or how much psi do you have on your air compressor? That's a really good question and really important question. You can have a compressor that's 10,000 psi, but make sure you turn it down to 80 psi. I don't think it really matters. How big the engine, how big the compressor is. <laughs> well, you can put it through a wall. <laughs> <laughs> it's, but if you're over 80 pounds, what you're going to find is the staple's going to be going right on some fabrics will go right through the fabric. So, um, I, and I'm talking about 90 pounds will do that per square inch. So make sure that your staple, make sure your, it's your, it's your gauges are turned down to 80. But 80 seems to be just right, by the way. If you go down to 65, or 70, sometimes you don't, the staple doesn't go in. So 80 seems to be perfect for that. So that's why it's important too, you know, no, keeping that in mind, is to go to a low cycle gun, you know, an air gun. So some of the air guns work on, on the lower cycle of the compressor. Um, you know, when the air is not, it, they perform better, put it that way. Uh, some of the guns, like on the cheaper guns, they need a steady 80 pound pressure. Um, so what you're getting with the, with the cheaper guns, a lot of jamming, that's what that means, and, and a lot of uh, stress on the, on the machine parts, because you have to go in there and take the, the, the staples that break, and it puts a lot of stress. So that's why it's important to get a good gun in the beginning. BEA, BEA, I'm not sure if they say BEA or BEA, those are the initials, that's the gun you're looking for. And I think I have it somewhere around here, I don't know, I can't get it at, it's not within my reach. But that gun is a low cycle gun. A low, it works on the lowest cycle on the on the uh, compressor. So look, I just I just I did this. I'm gonna pull this off. I have my piping that I'm gonna pull off. Hopefully, it comes off as easy as the blanket came off. Yeah, I need to make sure. Beautiful. Beautiful. Then I'm going to take my outside arms off on the back here first. I don't care for the rips, my outsides, I really don't. Um, I don't use them as a pattern or anything. I just want to show you that this has uh, tacks, so hopefully, I'll be able to get underneath there, pull that. I don't care if the tack falls on the floor, pulling that out. Then I'm going to go back and get the rest of those tacks. Sometimes the top's a little hotter because it has that ply grip on it. So I'm going to pull that. There's one outside arm, and then we're going to go in and take the tatting out. Do I go in and take every little staple out first? No, I don't. This is what I do, and then I go back and I get the loose staples. When you're learning uh, the technique that we use for beginners, Jimmy can vouch on this one. Um, we get them used to using the tools and taking a tat staple out every 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 staple out. Right. But it's just for beginners, just to get used to the tools. Then, it's up to you guys, if you want to do this for a career especially, speed yourself up. And this is, this is what I'm showing you now, how to speed up. So, I'm gonna, there's a nylon 
stretcher underneath here to, to offer support for the outside arm, which I don't recommend. I don't recommend nylon to do that. I'll tell you why. Nylon, um, nylon does not have a resiliency like burlap has. Nylon will will mat will go one way and not bounce back. That's the problem. It's a strong material, but it doesn't have that resiliency. So I don't recommend nylon for stretching. Use a piece of fabric, an old piece of fabric, or a scrap piece of fabric. That's the best thing. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. this is tearing apart. Now I'm going to go back and get all these. I'll get what I'll do is I'll get really detailed on that. Um, I'll probably pull up a chair and, and and really work that. Okay, but let's do the other arm. Do we have any other more comments, Patrick? That we've just a follow up to the staple gun uh, question. We want us to know what brand staple gun or um, what. Or, uh, what What brand? I have it right here. Oh, guys. the model. Oh, Sorry. The model. Sorry. Best gun on the market, absolute best gun on the market, is the BEA. Okay, and they have both the short nose and the long nose. And the long nose for different. I have a long nose one. It's not a BEA, but that's a long nose. Okay. Long nose is good for antiques, getting in and out of you know tight areas. The stub, the, the, the short nose works on most other things. Um, this is the best gun. Uh, you pay for it, but you know, definitely highly recommend that gun. Good question. Let's see if we can tear this up. And We're gonna do, is this going to be a record for you, Kevin? What's that? Uh, it's stripping it down. Uh, stripping this down? Could be. And hey, remember, folks, these are staples in here. Or been there. How long do you think, Kevin? 40 years? This is about a 40 year old Paul Street job. See, this fabric was very common 40 years ago. They used it everywhere. Oh, what I'm trying to do, the reason I'm, I'm working in certain areas is I'm trying to get leverage, okay? Um, if you don't want to use your hands to pull like me, you can use a pair of pliers. Um, your side cutters will rip the fabric. Um, so if you had a pair of pliers, you can actually pull it. Make sure you wear goggles when you do this. Make sure there's nobody else in the line of fire because I'm about to pull this. Um, Jimmy has goggles or glasses. So when I pull this, these tacks are gonna go flying. But let's just see what happens. Oh, nice, Kevin. Wow. And we're going to take the front. Now part of the fun of upholstery sometimes is opening up these little pockets. Some people call them the money pockets. Although, now that people are carrying a lot of credit cards, we don't find much money anymore. <laughs> like we're used no, to. No, it doesn't make the benefits in use to Kevin. That's no. All right. Okay. So let's just see what's going on inside here. Did they, the, did they over upholster on the side, Kevin? Should what's that? Did they over upholster on it? The no, they did a good job at the padding. Um, mm -hmm. I well, think they made. Because they, they have the layers where you and I would probably go with one layer, they had two. They did, Jimmy, and I think you might be, you might have a good, very good valid point. They might have gone a little bit overboard with this. It's a little thicker than I would have used. I probably would have used about half because I like to keep the outside arms a little slim mm -hmm. in a contrast to the overstuffed uh, right. uh, insides. Well how thick is that count? That's about an inch. Usually I do about half of an inch. Okay. So you're right Jimmy. Yeah. Just, before I take that that nylon off, you see how saggy it is? Mm -hmm. See what happened? So it's it's strong. It's a strong material but it is. Um, it doesn't have the bounce back like a piece of fabric would, or or the, even the burlap. So let's just see what's going on here. Now nylon usually is, is harder to take off too. Um, so pulling it in the right direction is important. So I'm grabbing hold with 
with my side cutters and then I'm going to use my hands at, at a certain point. Be careful when you do that because there's a staple in there. You're going to get you're going to get. You got to feel it. So let's see what secrets this chair holds. Who knows? Should we dim the lights? <laughs> No, but you know, we find everything from toothbrushes to q tips. Maybe we got that five bucks you've been using. That five you bucks that I owe you, Jimmy. Yeah. Might be in here. You might get it back. Oh, I yeah. see something colorful in here. Declaration of Independence. No. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. If we had that, we could retire now. We wouldn't need YouTube anymore. Okay, now pull this up. Try to. Whoops, I, I got a dime. Uh, let's find out if that's a uh, 19. Uh, Let's just see. Sometimes you can use one handle of your of your pliers and kind of put it in here for leverage purposes. Again, look at that. And you pull. Okay. Nice little trick there, right, Jimmy? Have you thought of your own line of tools, Kevin? We could probably actually we could devise um, some really specialized tools. So we found ten cents in that size. Let's see what we got over here. Yeah, we have a question. We have a question. Yes. This one's from Marie. Uh, my sofa back seat is attached to the entire sofa back, unlike the bottom seat. How do I upholster? That seems hard to me. You have semi-attached cushions, and they are hard. And and um, usually, I recommend to my clients mm -hmm. to take those cushions and make them into loose cushions. They're very difficult to do. Manufacturers love doing that because they save time. That's why they do it. And they have the machinery that just that just pumps those out, but to customize them, it, it is a lot of work. I mean, you could do them. I don't particularly. I'm not a fan of semi-attached back cushions because I never think they sit right, Jimmy. And what happens with those is they tend to sag and then rip, and they and they get compromised very easily because it's not because of poor workmanship or double stitching. You double stitch them all you want. It's just that um, they have to be soft, and because they have to be soft, they sag pets and people, they push that all that downward force. So you're much better off changing that, changing the style, making an upholstered back and making them loose cushions. And then you get a reversible cushion too. That's the benefit of that. So that's what I would recommend. Wouldn't recommend doing the semi-attached. Good question. Okay, now I'm gonna use my little trick by putting my tricks? handle in here. I think we'll have to put that tool on, on now what I'm doing it, Jimmy, is this is the insides, the inside back and the outside arms that I'm loosening. I haven't even touched the seat yet. And that's that's attached to the bottom, Kevin? All that's yep. attached to the bottom. Both the seat and the inside back are attached. But they have to go in order, right? The seat goes first, mm -hmm. and then the insides go over the seat. So there's nothing in there, Jimmy. One more time, Kevin. We have one more. Spin it around, baby. One more pocket to pay the mortgage here. What do you think? Uh, let's see what we can do. Otherwise, we'll have to. Uh, I don't know. think this dime can buy you a, a one mile ride on the T. Well, well, I'll go for the half mile. Okay. <laughs> we found a um, iPhone not too long ago in a, really? in a piece of furniture, yeah? Wow, I'm sure somebody was like, I didn't know. We returned it and the customer was very happy. Now we got a note here, Jimmy. What's it say? Well, I don't know. I don't know if I should read this. It's kind of exciting. <laughs> Ready? Exciting here in the shop ahead. It's, it's uh, remove these side edges first. Fold, crease, and tail long dotted lines. Oh, wait a minute. That, that's a code for something, I think. I think this used to be a check. Yeah. And we're, we're just left with Where's the... Where's the check? That's what <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> it's gone, man. Kind of good. Yeah, good. Thank, thanks for that payment. Oh, we have something else in here. Another note. It's Another a mystery. Note. It says, after Friday, question mark. Ooh. Oh. We add intrigue to this chair. I think we could probably make a mini series out of this chair. Jimmy, I think I see a oh. what? I see silver. No. I'm not kidding you. Not real silver. I can actually, got a quarter. I can get a, a What's the date on that? Oh, this is recent. 
Uh, 2016. Oh, you're not going to get anything. Yeah, okay. I'll throw it back. Actually, why don't you throw it into a money market fund? About 20 years ago, (laughs) Tiger. 35 cents and a a check remnant. You know what, Kevin? Uh, I think I better better go back to (laughs) Canon. Actually, so so I've got this. I'm going to go back and I'm going to take all the staples and all the loose, all the tacks out that are left. But by pulling it in that manner, you have to be really careful. You can't do that in your. I don't think you can do that in your living room. Um, you need a workspace, no people around. Make sure you wear your goggles in, in that method. But you know, honestly, if I were to go in and take each one of those tacks out with my tack remover and my hammer, and so, I mean, I have to go back there anyhow. I I think I saved myself probably two hours, two to three hours worth of work by by that method. Mm-hmm. So I hope that that helps you guys. Um, so we have another question, Dad. We got another question from Ojai. Ojai. From Ojai? Yes. If it is the springs, and those can those be fixed from the bottom without redoing the whole chair? Can it be? Can a beginner attempt it? Yes. So that's a good question. I can demonstrate on this chair. So as long as the top is intact and they feel relatively straight and and firm. What you can do, I'm going to show you, take this off, hopefully I have coil, I'm assuming that they're coil springs, not zigzag springs, these are coil springs, so as luck would have it you guys, what a great timing on your question, because this was repaired, this was a repair job. At some point in the life of this chair, probably the last time they upholstered it, they repaired from the bottom, and and it worked out quite well for them. Uh, the only thing I don't like what they did is they used nylon webbing. Ooh, what kind of upholstery was that? It's too good, Jimmy. Nylon webbing is too good. Well, it doesn't allow the springs to sag over time. That's that's why it's not good. So what happens is the tops get compromised rather than the bottom. So they they repaired it by. This is how you do it. What was the name of that fella? That just asked that? Oh, hi. Oh, this is zero high. <laughs> okay. So what they did was they tied, a four-way tied the springs first and tightly, and then they webbed over it. There you go. So, Jimmy, get a close-up of that. So what you're seeing here is a repair, just like what he was asking. Yeah, you can do it. Um, maybe he's got a twine running this way. And he's got twine twine running this way. He's got a, he he secures his springs. They're tight, and then he puts the webbing over as a, as a repair. So you can do that at home. You don't even need a webbing stretcher. And again, the kit that we show, we we have a demonstration which we're showing on the kit that's for sale. It shows you two ways of stretching webbing, just among many other things. We stretch the webbing with the with the tool for, just for stretching webbing. If you don't have that. We show you how to do it with the pliers, um, not the side cutters, but a regular pair of pliers. So, um, and you can do all that work. You could, this, to me, if you brought this to me in this shop, that would be about a $250 repair. So if you guys can do this on, at home, and I think most people can. Um, and I think that we have, Patrick, if I'm not mistaken on YouTube, I think we have a repair video like this. So. Um, want, I'm sure we do. Might want to check that. I out. should give you the library to look through. Uh, we have a hundred over 120 videos. Jimmy, were you the star? One of those videos that we use. You was I a, don't remember that. My recollection is maybe probably. we should. Jimmy hasn't been in a. He actually hasn't been in an actual YouTube video yet. He's he's got the plum job. He's got the online class job. He's got the he's got the live Q and A. Yeah, yeah. He's so the live Q and A. Someday that a week benefits for me. I'll see that large <laughs> pension check in the end. How many more years? Are you a member of SAG, Jimmy? Uh, uh, well, uh, no, uh, actually, uh, no, uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> Why do you ask? Well, I'm a member of SAD. Yeah, yeah, well, it's, it's almost the same thing. It's almost the same thing. I think you're right. There's a lot of unemployment involved in that. Yeah, well, struggling actors, I think, is the term. I think so. So that was a timely question, and I think um, if we don't have any other questions uh, pending, Patrick... Anything else coming in? Now's your chance because we're about to sign off. And I'm sorry if I sounded a little slow tonight. I am really tired because we had a very busy day here at the shop. 
we, we did everything. We were delivering, we were picking up. Jimmy came in, we had customers coming in all day long. I'm glad we got a nice, you know, healthy shop here. And the online classes keep us busy. And we hope that you guys enjoy answers who are taking the online classes. We have a follow-up follow concerning, concerning the online, online classes. classes. So okay. Well, so well, uh, uh, it's oh hi again. How excited. Could you write a comment with the course? Can I order supplies from your shop by sending the measurements? I think uh, the first question I'm not sure of, but it seems like I'm wondering if there's com like there is interaction with these courses. We do comment. Yes. And we do answer all questions. We can follow up on Yes. That. The important thing, the most important thing for somebody like yourself who sounds like they want to advance a little bit and, and, and move forward in, a, in a, a, at least a better hobby or a career is you have to get that kit that I design for beginners and I show some problems within there purposely. I show um, a couple of mistakes that even I make, but just how to overcome those mistakes. But it shows you all of the different applications. More importantly, you get the supplies and I give you my my direct contact for the supplies so that important you're moving forward you develop a relationship with the supplier and learn the lingo it's really important to learn the lingo and not be asking them all the questions uh, you can get their catalog and but get that kit first the kit is important to get and then do the kit uh, get familiar with the supplies and why we use certain supplies and the names of them and then uh, for the person who wants to clinch it then you get your clinch it and then you fill in from there um, you know this is a good trade you don't really need it. it's not a huge startup for cost it really isn't um, you could start up a whole upholstery shop for under two thousand dollars I think including a sewing machine and the basic supplies to get yourself going um, most people already have their sewing machine, so they don't need that. So supplies um, are not a big portion of this, unless you're doing, uh, you know, a lot of rehabbing, a lot of uh, restoration, and then you get into some supplies. But reupholstering, you don't need too many supplies. So ch check out the website. At least go on the website and check out what we're offering. I think you'll, I think you would enjoy it just looking at it. So we have one last uh, good question to end with. So um, Joseph again follows up. Um, how often do you have? Do, how often have to add webbing when there's? Oh, I can't. I'm not sure about that wording of this one. It's about it's about webbing. Yeah. How often do you have to add webbing when there's webbing in the chair? Okay, all right. I read it the wrong way. So I think he's probably encountered webbing that has sagged. So like. Um, Webbing that has sagged is not necessarily a bad thing. It's actually a good thing. It's, if it's jute, unlike this nylon, sagging is actually a good thing. But what you can do, sometimes you, you do this, you can repair it, or you can go over, sometimes you can go over if you have a heavy stock, you can go over a jute webbing that's already there, you can go in between here to do a, a quicker repair. Um, or you could, if it needs a total restoration, that's a whole different thing. But you have to kind of use your judgment. I, I have to say though that jute webbing lasts a good long time. You can you can get a piece that's a hundred years old and the webbing is still good, believe it or not. So I hope that answers all your questions. This was a very lively question and answer. We find that we got a lot of questions towards the end of the hour, uh, but um, we're trying to also pick a better time to do this, right Patrick? A more of a solid time? Right, starting, starting January 9th. And the Q and A will be every Thursday. Every Thursday, solid. So that yes. people next week we will have one, but we're not sure if it's either. It'll probably be Friday next week. Right. But then after that, it's going to be solid Thursdays every Thursday. And keep in mind um, that you can always follow up. This, this is going to be posted. The live show is posted on YouTube. Um, so you'll see it and you can ask questions uh, even after we sign off, which we'll gonna, answer them next the following week following week So which we're going to do now. Thanks for joining us. That was fun. And thank you to our new cameraman, Jimmy yes, Thank you, Jimmy. Another trade that I'll probably won't take me anywhere <laughs> <laughs> He's always complaining, but we love him anyhow <laughs> All right. Well, thanks until next time. We'll see you later